Washington Commanders coach Dan Quinn from the breakfast table in Orlando, Florida. That coming up on today's episode of Locked on Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders and sign up today to be an insider. From there, you'll get news analysis, insights, Rumors, speculation, just one-on-one conversations with me via text message. No hashtags, no apps, no filters needed. Plus, you get bonus content, command huddles, tape studies, all kinds of good stuff coming. So go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders to get in on that fun today. We had a few sign up this week. Always appreciate the newcomers coming through and appreciate all those who are also considering. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for commandercountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. You already know it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I appreciate you for continuing to come through. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create your account, use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode, we are going to hear from your head coach, Washington Commanders head coach, Dan Quinn, who sat down to have breakfast with the media Tuesday morning in Orlando, Florida. And uh, here we're going to start off with a little bit of an update on where he is, how he feels about the team so far, and how they've gotten to where they're going, plus a little bit of excitement in his voice about the offseason program. So in case you don't already know, new t- or teams with new head coaches get to start their official off-season workout program two weeks prior to every other NFL team that has a returning head coach, which means the Washington Commanders, the 2024 Washington Commanders, are going to be getting to work on April 2nd. That is when they start. Uh, they get some workouts. They get some some info, some informational training. They get some a little bit of a camp at the end of the, the period, but a lot of good stuff coming, and it's a good ramp up to help them kind of get to know the players that they have, the players that they brought in as they get ready for the NFL draft to kind of figure out who maybe is already looking like maybe they're not who they thought they were and where they need to go ahead uh, and address some other positions. But Dan's also going to tell you that he feels pretty good about what they've done in the front seven. He really likes the collaborative event or uh, effort that has led to the free agency hall. He's going to talk about trading Sam Howell and kind of what went into that and what his thoughts are on the quarterback as he heads to Seattle and uh, whether or not the players that he's brought in that he specifically has ties to were brought in specifically because he has ties to them. And then of course, we're going to talk about the role that defensive coordinator Joe Witt Jr. has had in some of these uh, decisions and uh, to uh, and in their efforts to create what Dan calls a quote unquote kick-ass defense. So that's what you're going to hear now coming from coach Quinn. And now let's bring in coach Dan Quinn. Obviously. Thank you for joining us for breakfast. Yeah. Um, how do you feel like this team is in shape compared to when you took over? I think uh, over the last you know 50 or so days, it's been fun you know being part of Adam's process and uh, all the way you know from the team to first getting here, evaluating everybody, going through free agency, and that process continues now. But one thing I know I am damn fired up about is so next Tuesday, uh, getting started with the team, and so I'm really looking forward to that and being around the guys and starting you know officially our off-season program. So. That's why I coach, you know, it's the connections and the relationships with the players. So I'm certainly looking forward to building them. You don't have that chance until it really begins. And uh, so that's why I'm all lit up about next week getting running. How helpful is it that you guys get that extra early start being a new coach with a new team? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, by design, it's, it's there for that reason, you know, to give a little longer runway to build those relationships. Uh, we'll get an opportunity to get on the field, you know, with the camp. You know, one extra time, so we'll certainly take advantage of you know all the you know the options that the league gives us. We're just trying to find an edge, like in every single thing, and having those camps and starting early is another example. What did you feel was most accomplished in free agency? I think really, uh, probably I'd say the front seven, John. You know, like that was one of the areas that we wanted to address, and uh, so you know some of the offensive line, the defensive ends, the linebackers. I would say those would probably be ones uh, you know that that come to mind at the front of no big state secret there but <laughs> that was really where I thought um, you know this whole process would be about you know between free agency and the draft and how those two things could mesh together and uh, so step one of that has taken place and now you know the second step of that begins from the draft and you know post draft the college free agents and how does all of that come together so uh, I'm really excited to get rolling 
with the players for a few weeks, get on the field some with them prior to the draft, and that'll help you know, put the whole thing together. Coach uh, Quinn, yes. um, so a recurring thing that we continue to hear is that you are doing things collaboratively. So what does that look like so far in free agency for you? Yeah, I've been really pumped to be a part of the process there. And uh, so from Adam's team, honestly, with, you know, with Adam and Lance and Martin, like to see those guys work together has been really good. And so first part is you do an evaluation. And often you want to do, although we do it collaboratively, collaboratively, you want to do it separate first. So you can get your own opinions formed and your own things. So then you can bring that to the table. This is what I saw. This is the game I watched. This is what it looked like. Then you have good discussions about the player. The thing that I'll try to do with every example, when Adam and I are together, when we add a player onto the team and say, this is where I see him doing for the team. I see him being the starting this. I see him being the backup this. So as long as I can make sure I'm always given a clear vision of what to do, then for him, he'll know where to select that person, what the value is, and on and on. So that's kind of what the collaborative looks like for me is I always can give him a clear vision of what it would look like on our team if that player was here. Because it's not um, just, you know, this is what I think. It's and what would he do here if he was on the team. Come then, can you talk about the trade of Sam Howell and kind of what led to that decision? Yeah, and I think, um, one, like I said, I was glad to be in as part of the process. But I, uh, I've said it before, how impressed I was with Sam as a competitor. He's a tough guy. And I thought once in a while in our league, there's a good win-win that takes place. And I think uh, Sam uh, heading to Seattle, they're excited to have him. He's got a great op there with those guys. Uh, for us, you know, Marcus being here, you know, that was an opportunity that we want to do as well. So every once in a while, those win-wins happen. And uh, but I'll, I'll uh, certainly uh, respect who the player is. I got a chance to coach against him, and, uh, and that's what I told him when he spoke. Hey, Dan, Dan, look at your offseason coach. You added veterans to basically every level yep. of your team. But on your front, it's offensive, defensive line, linebackers. You had people you have history with. Yep. Why is that important? Uh, I think number one that really had the, it was about our fit, you know, in terms of what we were looking for to add to it. So I get the comparison, but some of those it might have just matched up that who had the fit. I also had some experience with, and every once in a while that does line up, Steve, to where it can go. But it wasn't by design to make sure there was you know players that I had been with before. It just so happened I had a very clear vision of what those players can do and, and how we would fit. Uh, but I really am pumped, man, to get rolling with these guys on the second uh, and seeing their interaction and their mix together. And the faster the team does that, the, the, the better we'll get. And so that'll be a number one, top of the priority, the best of the best teams are good in the locker room first and setting standards and things. So when these rookies do arrive after the draft, there's some processes and some standards already into place. This is how we'll do things. This is how we'll go. And, and that mentoring will be a big piece of that. We have the same question, the influence on Joe, that Coach Witt has had as well as building the roster so far. Yeah, and so Joe's got such a clear vision and uh, of what the guys can do and how to do it and where we play him. So whether you use the example of Frankie or Chin or Dante or however we would put different guys into different roles, Joe's got a really clear vision of doing that. And so when you start the process in the off season and you're putting the playbook together and how would you use guys, that'll go on now. And then as we add players, you know, we've done the free agency piece, as you add them through the draft, it'll change a little bit. Um, for instance, when um, I was at Dallas, we had started, you know, my first year putting in a playbook and we drafted Parsons and we put a lot more blitzes in, you know. So it was like, how do you feature the players based on who you have? And so you start broad, this is, you know, the overall scheme of how we want to do. Uh, we're going to emphasize tackling um, at a very high level. We're going to emphasize taking the ball and all that goes into that. So those two principles override all of the scheme. If you can be a good tackling team and you can get the ball, you're going to have a chance to play good defense. There's so much space that the offense tries to create. If you're not a good tackling team, you'll get your ass kicked. And so that's, to me, tackling takeaways and you can still work on that a lot during the off season. If you don't tackle to the ground, that means you do all the you know drill work to get yourself in position to go make the hit and keeping leverage. Then you add the scheme part to it and that's how you create 
you know, really good kick-ass defense. Of course, building the roster is not complete. Uh, well, it's never really complete, right? But the NFL draft is where the Washington Commanders want to build the draft. All this other stuff has been the supplemental efforts. And like Coach Quinn said, uh, getting an early start with these guys will help them kind of figure out even more where they want to go in the NFL draft. So where they are, where are they? Where is Coach Quinn in that process? That is coming up next on today's episode of Locks On Commanders, part of the Locks On Podcast Network, your team every day. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game in the tournament. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. Whether you're betting on a big upset or the number one seed, it is time to go dancing with America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick Who's going to win it all? The UConn men were favorites at the beginning of the tournament. The South Carolina women were favorites in the beginning of their tournament. If you think that one of them is not going to be the NCAA champion, by all means, drop your $5 bet on that. And if it wins, it's your first bet. You will get $200 in bonus bets, of course. You could also put a wager down on the future Super Bowl champions. The San Francisco 49ers are current favorites to win Super Bowl 59. The Chiefs are the favorites out of the AFC. And you can even pick your preferred Super Bowl matchup and put some money on that. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet on college hoops till they cut down the nets or your NFL futures, whatever you want. Go to FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NFL. Continuing now on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, your first view today and every day. Every day, just make sure you come back tomorrow. We're going to continue our conversations from Orlando, Florida at the NFL Annual League meetings. Josh Harris sat down with us Tuesday afternoon, so we're going to share a good amount of what he had to say. So make sure you come back from that. In the meantime, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn the volume down when all the shouting starts? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or for free on the Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day back to our conversation now with dan quinn here we're going to talk about where his focus is now on the nfl draft how far he is into his draft preparation what's happening with the number two overall pick the evolution his quarterback evaluations what he's looking for at pro days by the way wednesday lsu's pro day Jaden daniels pretty sure the washington commanders are going to be there in attendance size and durability in quarterback evaluation specifically to Jaden daniels and a deadline to set their draft plan is going to kind of reinforce some of the things that we've been talking about here on the show. So let's bring Coach Quinn back in. Last time we talked, you talked about wanting to know sequentially, evaluate your own guys. For the the yep. Where is your focus right now? What are you spending most of your time on? Now it's the draft and uh, getting ready with the team. And so because we went through the first process of our own team, which I think like that's part of your process every year, then going through the free agents, what they would look like if they were here, and now the shift for me has really become with the draft and then putting our team together in the locker room, on the field, start, you know, when we put in you know, our system, so to speak, that'll be kind of a, a dual process for me, draft and our current guys over the next month. What did that, like, what that schedule look like for you in terms of implementing that system and then you know, evaluating your actions? Yeah, so let's begin from next week when the player's there. They're there, you know, in the mornings, you know, until about one o'clock, and then you can shift into draft. So it's like morning with the players, afternoon draft meetings, preparation to go. So it's like, you know, a split schedule, so to speak, where it's current guys, draft schedule, current guys, draft schedule. And so having that balance is actually a lot of fun because you get the interaction with the team. So I've been, I always feel this way this time of year because you miss the players and being around them. And so I'm really looking forward to getting started with them. But the afternoons and the evenings are mostly spent on draft prep. How much time are you going to spend like with the, you know, to prior years with your head coach because you're coming in later? How does that affect your draft prep? Are you ever watched as much as maybe you wanted to, or is this when you start to get more heavy into Yeah, this time? is when I get into that process longer. And so what's good now is like downloading so much on our devices and our iPads. So if you get a break in the action here, okay, I watched a certain player today. Um, you know, I'll talk to Adam, hey, who do you want me to look at tomorrow? You know, we're going on some trips together. Obviously, I watched a lot on those players, you know, prior to going to their days to see the workout. So I have some good discussion points with them. Hey, I saw, you know, this game against uh, you know, a certain team. Tell me about that game. You know, that's still fresh in my mind. And I just watched it the night before. 
You said you're just kind of diving into the college tape now, the prospect tape. Yep. Uh, that said, there's a lot of people who are projecting what you guys are going to do at two, which is with the quarterback. So how do you kind of square what people saying? They think they know what you guys are going to do, but the head coach has not finished watching the tape yet. That is absolutely accurate. And so uh, <laughs> if somebody uh, thinks they, they know, um, they'll have to fill me in because uh, uh, Adam and I, we're not there yet. And so uh, once we get – that's okay. Once uh, we do – but. Let's go through the whole thing. And that's actually a really fun part of this to make sure that you don't rush it. You know, it, for us, our whole, all these picks, like we're going to add a lot of really good players at a lot of positions. So I know quarterback gets a lot of the attention and like, as it should, it's the story here and everywhere, but there's a lot of players and uh, the team has been set up in a good space, you know, with a lot of picks for this year's draft. So uh, that'll be one of the storylines, but it won't be the storyline. Dan, we've talked about how when you were in Dallas, you had these ideas for what you wanted to do on offense, not just defense, and how that had evolved since your time in Atlanta. At quarterback in particular, how have you evolved the way you evaluate quarterbacks and what you look for in them? Yeah, I think number one, Jory, is like the evaluation is, uh, and it, Cliff had an impact on me as well, and, and so did um, Adam. It's the ability, uh, I think not pro day right now, like of a throw, but how quickly can a guy make the right decision? How quickly can he speed up when a blitz is coming? How quickly can he anticipate when those things happen? So I've really been mindful of watching to say, not just the throwing motion or the accuracy, but what happens can he get out of a bad play? Can he speed up uh, and make great decisions still? So those are part of the process that I've looked for. For years, I thought, you know, deep ball accuracy, when that shot comes to go take one, that would be really important. I still look at that, like the physical and mental toughness of the position. So it takes a while, honestly, to go through the position because you don't watch a cut up. Like to do a receiver, you can watch the targets first. And that's an easy way to get going to evaluate that person on route running. But with a quarterback, you really have to watch every single play to say, did he get him out of a bad play here in a run game? Did he, you know, move outside? So it's not just the throws if you encompass everything. So that's what I would recommend to you guys when you do look at quarterbacks. Don't just look at the throws, but look at an entire game. And then you'll really have an assessment about do you scramble to remain a passer? Did he, you know, Sometimes a throwaway is the best decision right here. It wouldn't show that on the stat sheet, but that was actually a really good decision. And so those are the things um, that I've been digging out of. Sharon, when we're on that note, do you think decision-making needs to be evaluated differently at quarterback than any other position? I do. And is that one of the reasons it's such an inexact science? Yeah, because I think we all heard the word processing a lot, right? How does he process? How does he process? Because there's so much information that comes from that, uh, you know, to that position. like. Quite honestly, most of my time as a defense coach was trying to change the look for the person so they had to process after they had the ball in their hands. So uh, I definitely feel like it's like it's within football, it's its own special entity. And uh, it does make it fun because there are profiles that you want at all the positions. But at quarterback, there's so much more that goes into it. And you really have to take your time and go through every part of the step. And I've been super impressed by Adam and his you know, deliberate process that he goes through with evaluating these guys. And so the first time that we put somebody on to be remain nameless, it was a very good process that he discussed with me about what he saw in the year prior. So if you're really digging in on somebody. You don't just look at one year. You know, you look at multiple years. And what did 22 look like? What did this year look like? What, you know, um, what was that name again? Yeah, like I said, <laughs> <laughs> there's no stage secrets coming out today. So. When you look at pro days, what do you look at? I think for, uh, like a, for a yeah, I think for all the guys, one you want to see just really the person, you know, how do they interact with their teammates? What do they look like? What are some of the movements? Because certainly for the positions, the most 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 important things is the tape, you know, how they do as a ball player, and uh, so that's where it starts and ends with me. But I do love going to their school, whether it's at a pro day or a visit, and just spending time with them, asking them questions. How do they learn it? What does it look like? Tell me about your system. And so it's more the discussions more than anything else. And then on the field, it's usually pretty quick. You guys have seen some of the ones and been to some of the ones. So they happen quickly. The quarterbacks are very orchestrated in terms of this, this, this. Same thing with like a running back or a wide out. These are the routes. So it's more the movements. And then honestly, I want to get to know the man before the ball player. So I've scouted the ball player at the days like that in the interviews I want to get to know a little bit more about the man and see if we'd be a good fit for one another. 
interesting. Um, how does QB size and durability fit into the equation for you at two? And do you have concerns about Jaden Daniels? Um, well, I'll answer the, the overall one first. It's not one size fits all, but I think there are some measurables that you do want to find some markers to hit for a quarterback. You know, everybody you hear about hand size and you know his ability to, to rotate and you know shoulder flexibility and all of those things. Those will show up on the tape. And also being where we live, um, you better be weather resistant too. And you know, be able to play into elements and do all that because they certainly have games you know that will be that way. But. More than anything, it's the ability from the neck up. You know, it's one of the ones that earlier before you got here, we were talking about the evaluation of the quarterback. There's so much that goes into it, and making decisions and putting the ball in the right spot, the accuracy, the toughness. So all of those things really encompass into it, but it's not specific to cookie cutter for us. I think that's probably changed the last 20 years, hasn't it, from where we were in the, in the NFL. And that's happening more through college. There's more athletic players. We're in shotgun more than we ever have been. There's quarterback design run. So um, it's one of the cool parts about our game that it never just stays the same. There's always evolving. It's different from when I first came into the NFL, you know, in 2001 to what it is today. And in another, you know, 20, 25 years, it'll be different when we're having breakfast here. And 25 years, we'll say, man, that's different too. So that part is cool because it's always changing. Then going back to draft planning, like obviously you guys have up until Thursday night, really, if you want to, but do you have like a ballpark deadline that you guys want to have your strategy? No, that's something that Adam hadn't discussed with me about when the uh, drop-down deadline uh, would take place because even during the course of the draft, you guys know those trades take place and you have to be fluid. So he'll have a list you know, of the players, where do we want to go, how do we want to feature them, where are you deeper at one spot because you don't wait – just for one player you know when you're five picks away these are the players you're two picks away these are the players so you never wanted to be a pick away and like okay i was only waiting on one like okay, now what do we do so you always have you know kind of the group that you're looking for and um but it's a it's a really fun process to be a part of and seeing adam uh, lead him the group through that uh, i can't wait to, to be with him you know all the way through the draft Finally, the National Football League passed one more rule change on Tuesday, bringing us to a total of four for the week. We will talk about the new way you will be watching NFL kickoffs happen. That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event with the next sponsor for today's episode, Game Time. You don't have to. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events happening near you. With killer deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time literally takes the guesswork out of buying your tickets. They got last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, whatever you need. It's easy to find and buy tickets for everything going on in your area. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. And they've got deals right up to the start of a lot of events, even an hour after some of them start. It is the place for you to find last-minute seats. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets for the same event, same section, same row for less money, they will give you 110% of the so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create your account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On Monday, the NFL voted to ban the hip drop tackle, but there are some specific uh, parts that Dan Quinn actually told us he does not think it's going to get flagged as much as everybody thinks it is. Um, that comment um, from him will be in another episode, a future episode of Locked On Commanders. Couldn't get everything that he said to us on Tuesday into one episode, so we will continue to air more clips of that. Again, these press conferences, you cannot, they're these scrums, I should say, not really press conferences, uh, were not streamed by the team. Now, there's a few other reporters, John Kime, J.P. Finley, I think Ben Standing has video of them. I've got video of them. So only about a handful of us, but we'll get through um, all of it. And then insiders at the end of the week, you will be getting the full video files uh, access so you can watch it uh, as as you wish uh, in total. So with the hip drop uh, band, there there is a new route for NFL coaches have three challenges in a game. They also added a rule to enforce personal fouls by offensive players on plays where there is a change of possession. Now they have completely redone how NFL kickoffs are going to work. And it basically looks like what the XFL did, if you remember that. So they should approve this on Tuesday, and it's only approved right now for the 2024 NFL season. They're basically going to test it out, see how it goes, and then go from there. So it could be changed or altered 
moving down the road. But basically, here's the deal. Kickers are going to continue to kick off from their own 35-yard line. But the other 10 players on the kickoff team are going to line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line. So that's going to look a little bit different. At least nine members of the returning team are going to line up in what they're calling the setup zone, and that is between their own 35 and 30-yard lines. Up to two returners can be in what's being called the landing zone, which goes from the goal line to the 20-yard line. Nobody other than the kicker and the returner or returners, if there's two of them in the uh, return landing zone, sorry, uh, can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone. So until the ball contacts the ground or a player, a receiver, a returner, Nobody else on the field will move. Touchbacks will be marked at the 30-yard line. So there is some punishment there for teams that kick off uh, into the end zone. No fair catches. So there will be returns on everything that's not a touchback. And if it's a touchback, uh, the receiving team gets the ball at the 30-yard line. In the event a team wants to attempt an onside kick, they have to inform the officials that they're doing so. And then you'll return to traditional NFL formations. No surprise onside kicks are going to be allowed. Uh, not sure how I feel totally about this. I get some of it. I do like the fact that it kind of ensures we're going to get more returns in the game. Don't necessarily like the onside kick rule. I think if you're going to do that, just go with, you know, the fourth and 15 thing or the fourth and 20 thing that a lot of people have brought up uh, where you get one down, you gain the, the necessary yards, you get a first down, you keep the ball. If you don't, you turn the ball over. The other team gets the ball wherever the dead ball spot uh, landed. So I think, you know, I think that's probably the next step in this is if we're just going to do onside kicks like that and there's no surprises and all that stuff. I mean, onside kicks are already so rare, uh, rarely converted. You might as well just be done with them. So that is the last uh, rule change of this meeting. Now, it doesn't mean it's the only thing there is more uh, potentially to come. There's another spring meeting uh, that the NFL owners will have could potentially uh, change some more rules there. But we've got four rule changes. If you missed the other three in depth, go back to the last episode. We talked about them. In there. Coming up tomorrow, you're going to hear from managing partner owner of the Washington Commanders, Josh Harris, as he talked to us about a lot of things, including new stadium, current stadium upgrades, and some other stuff. So we'll have that for you on Thursday. In the meantime, if you got questions or comments, just throw them in the YouTube comment section or text me directly by becoming a Locked On Commanders Insider at joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders. Don't forget to check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever 24 7 live sports streaming channel on YouTube. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, or thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind. And we'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.